Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. It's time to head to the tent. I'm heading up to the tent this morning just to check everything out. I'll stay one night and come back tomorrow. Well, last time I was up there, we were hoping that uh, Brandon and Megan and Gabe could come up for this weekend, but that did not work out. Um, so anyway, I'm going up to check everything because of, you know, there's the bears and my dad hasn't been able, of course, to get up there. Uh, his surgery, he's still getting better. He's still walking with the walker and uh, they are, you know, he goes, has his therapy all the time and he's just doing things as they're telling him to do them and they say he's coming along really good. I have my sidekick Joni with me today. She's gonna be the tent dog. Like the temperature is going to be in the 60s today. It's uh, 65 right now, according to my truck. 47 for tonight's low, but it's going to be windy today. Um, but it's out of the west, so that should come from behind out towards the lake, which is better than if it's coming off the lake. Well, certainly looks like the bears tried to get in, huh? Look at that crap. Glad I have three quarter inch plywood on those inside walls. Everything looks good in here. I think I'm gonna run over and check the folks place out, make sure everything's all right over there also. I don't know if you can see it, but I mean, the screen is ripped and the screen door was open and you can see paw prints on the glass where it tried to push in on it. All the way up into here even. It'll be interesting looking at the pictures on the camera that's on the front of the tent. I don't see anything that looks out of place here. But Joni sure is doing a lot of sniffing. I'll go inside the cabin later and check it out. I looked in the windows. I mean, nothing's been in there, but 
I'll make sure I go in in a little bit and make sure everything's okay. Well, let's see. Uh, if we got any of it on camera, I'm sure we got something. Some of this is just going to be me up here because I put the camera right back up again. So this is when I left. There's a rabbit. And this was two days ago. Nothing. This was yesterday. There he's up there. Maybe that's all. I don't think that's all ripped yet. This is open. Let's see if he goes back up. Let's see. There it's all ripped. Must have just been right there. 21408. He's a pretty big bear. Brought up my trusty old double barrel and some three inch magnum slugs. <laughs> Last time I was up here, all I had was my, uh, I had my nine millimeter and then I had uh, a 20 gauge with slugs, but this time I thought I'm gonna bring up the big ones. I'm just texting with George, and he's actually up at his place across the lake right now, staining a shed. And wanted to know if I needed any help, but this is just superficial, you know, it's just on the outside. But he said that Aunt, he said he was going to come and check out um, here this weekend because Andy one had one that come into his place. I just asked if he maybe that's onto his property. My the cabin that you guys see that the folks have right now, this is, that's the second cabin on this lake, which I've explained many times. I even have a video called Log Cabin that shows the old cabin. Well, Andy and his wife bought that cabin from my folks. And then my dad, he built this, the, the one that they have now. So now I asked him, did he have any damage? I don't know if, if, that, if that bear made it in, because that door that my dad had on that is a... Uh, Okay, he said, screens torn off windows to get in and out. Tore off cupboard doors, spread some food around. I think Andy was sleeping when it happened, but not sure on that. Then it got in the garage and got the bird seed. Wow. Wow. Well, I'm going to have to call my dad and tell him that because I would have never thought something could get into that cabin. That's a complete full log cabin. I mean, the windows, of course, aren't, you know, but... Huh. <laughs> Great weekend to come up here to stay, huh? It, this one, this is that year old cabin. S tore the screens off the windows to get in and out, tore the cupboard doors off, spread some food around. Yep, got in the cabin. And then he said he thinks that Andy was sleeping when it happened, but he's not sure on that. Then it got into the garage or your old, uh, you know, your old, um, and ate the bird seed. He says it tore the screens off and went through the window. And right, I don't, yeah, I might drive over there and ask him. I mean, that's interesting, you know. So, and she said that 
they've got some reports from the Boundary Waters, but I was the first one for a residence, and they didn't say anything about that. They just said they like to get reports so they can kind of track what's happening with the bears. Yeah, I brought up my 12 gauge and my, and my double barrel with slugs this time, so. <laughs> and I got the dog with me too, so anything that tries to come around here at night is gonna, I'll know it, so. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll buzz over there and see if, I mean, it's only, yeah, they'd be up. I'll see what they say and I'll get back to you and let you know. I did walk, I didn't go inside, I walked all around the outside, everything was good, but I will go inside also, but, yeah, I'll do my cooking out on a fire tonight, the wind is blowing towards the lake, which is nice, so, okay, I will, yep. Yeah. Well, I'm going to actually drive over to my folks' old cabin and see if Andy and his wife are there and talk to them about whatever happened, if anything happened. When I was a kid, well, 16, 17 years old, these trees right here were, they had just logged it. There was no trees here. <laughs> now they're 30 feet tall. I just got back here to the tent. I did go over and talk to Andy and his wife, and they did. They had a, he had the windows wide open on a cabin. Well, now it's their house. They live here half the year, and they live in Mexico in the winter. And uh, the bear just came right in the one screen, and he said it didn't even ruin that screen. It went in there. I took a picture of it, um, tore off two cabinet doors. There's another, another one that has a scratch in it, and it ate some cookies. It um, knocked down, they had a thing of uh, coffee beans all over on the wood floor. <laughs> then it went in the refrigerator, opened the refrigerator. She said there was a big paw print on top of the fridge, opened it up. Didn't take any of the food in the fridge, but it did take the butter out of the door <laughs> to eat that. So, so now he said they put an audio book. I guess bears don't mind music, but they don't like conversation. So they have that running outside and uh, at night and then he has some cat bowls that have bleach in them that he puts on the front porch and he said he was actually there that happened about 1 30 in the morning and he said that he didn't have his hearing aids in and he said he can't hear hardly anything without them but he did thought he heard some ruckus and he said he's getting up putting his pants on and he's comes out of the bedroom and going down the hallway and he's yelling and screaming and by then the bear uh, didn't go it came in the front window, went out the side window, and that one it ruined the screen getting out. The other one popped the screen without hurting it, but that one it ruined the screen. So Andy said he never actually saw the bear in the cabin because it was that fast. And then they had went to, I don't know if they went to Minneapolis, I don't know where they were coming back from, but anyway they got home and it was about midnight and it was raining out and as they drove up the garage door which was you know the old workshop over there um the doors were open on it and they went in there and the garbage had been messed around with and the bird seed was opened up and they went then they went inside the the cabin and it, oh somebody's here hold on oh did you i didn't know if you had the dog i just found one off the edge only and i just put her in the bedroom so yeah nice mess on that huh Ripped the front part of that. Didn't come in, but well, it's good to have the plywood there. Yeah, I got three quarter plywood on there, but he was trying. Yep. Yeah. Did this here? There's prints here. Up looks like up here too. Like he pushed on it or oh, 
just uh, just yeah. So yeah, what a what a mess. <laughs> well, I was gonna, you know, I talked to Andy or texted the other day, and he said they were up there. And I said I thought I'd be coming up, you know, in the next few days. He says, well, come on over, and I thought, oh, I'm gonna ride my bike you know, some afternoon over, and then I thought I'd swing by here and check, because oh, I was wondering, you know, I mean, you were up here recently, and of course, you yeah. cooking and stuff, you know, and they can smell. Yeah, it. so yeah, that bear, I mean, he was just, you can see here that he was at, this was at 210.408, and then 210.453. He was only, uh, he was up there less than a minute. Yeah. Because I don't see... The next picture is daytime, and you can see the. Oh. Yeah, so I. <laughs> yep. That was last night, right? Yeah, yep, 8 12. So, I mean, that's to, yeah, 8. That's yeah, today today's, the 12th, or. Yeah. No, today's the. Yeah, today's yeah. the 12th, yep. so, yep. yeah. I don't even know if that's the same one. Oh, he was up there twice. So he must have went up there. That's a, that that's a 20 two o'clock. That's a, well, what's that? Eight. Eight, and that's nine. So he came back. Huh. I didn't even see that other picture. Yep. So I don't know if he did. There the door's not open, though, but then there it is open. So must have been in the basement or taking a nap or something. I talked to her for a while, and then he just came out of nowhere, out of the back hallway. So, yeah, he must have been doing something, but... Yeah, he said he was there. It was like 1.30 in the morning, and he said without his hearing aids in, he can't hear anything. And she had said earlier that he probably had his hearing aids were out, CPAP machine was on and everything. And she's, then he said he thought he heard a ruckus, and he said he'd come out just screaming. He never saw the bear. Yeah. And it came in that front window and went out the side one and ruined that screen when it went out. So Yeah. Well, last night I, you know, I closed my windows down to like that, now I've got the dog with, yeah, you know, and she would bark, I'm sure, if she smelled anything or heard anything. And I think the dogs actually keep them away, you know, a little bit. If yeah. they can smell the dog piss and stuff, you know. Right, right. And that, and then, like I say, the dogs give you some warning, too, and that. But I brought my my Glock 10 mil handgun. Did you? I see you got a shotgun. I got my shotgun. Yeah, this morning I'm down there looking because I read, you know, last time I was up here, what's good? And they said the best thing you can use is slugs. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm 9 millimeter and you can shoot at them all day. You know, but 10 millimeter is supposed to be good. Right. You know, and then I, I got that bear spray that I got from my dad's place here. I don't know that I would, after being in the Louisiana house when it got broke into when I was down there, I don't know how good of a thinking you are when you're waking up from a deep sleep. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, I don't know that you have, I could figure out the bear spray thing, you know, I mean. <laughs> but I mean, here's, look at today and how windy it is. Yeah. And if you, if, if you were standing here and a bear was there and he was coming towards you and you hit that spray, it'd all come right back in your face. Yeah, right. so I'd be, you and know. you know, there, and I think there's very, because who was I, I just, saw something about some people, you know, with the bear and they sprayed and it didn't even... Really? I, I think there's various formulas of it and there's some really good, you know, heavy duty stuff and then I think there's kind of your... It's like mosquito dope, you know. Right. You can say mosquito dope, but there's 100% deep and right. nothing. Yeah. You, you know, deep or skin nothing, so you know? soft, Avon, you know, and everything in between and that, yeah. so, but, uh, I shoot it, who knows? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how many guys are up here, if, uh, what's his name at the cafe is still, Tom, is still, he used to do that, you know, how you bait and oh, yeah. yep. guide, you know, and charge. And is it, is he still open up there? I know my dad tried earlier this year and there was nobody there, so. I have no idea. I don't get in there much, and I've never, I know your dad likes going in there, but I never went in there. I don't can't, I don't think I've ever been in there in my life. You know, I don't, maybe when I was a kid or something, you know, but yeah. I, my dad always talks about how people would go there, and the phone numbers would be on the wall, they call people for different stuff, and I have no, 
Well, I used to go in there, you know, when I worked up here in the 70s, high water, and they they were going to go white water down there. Oh, really? And they started, I'm not sure where they started, I think it was right in that area. And they got down a ways, and they went sideways and hit a rock and took their canoe and <laughs> bent it right down and put it under the water. And oh. <laughs> they were done for. Uh. Well, my well, George was here for about 45 minutes, and now it's, I don't know, it's probably 1230. I'm kind of hungry, so I'm going to, like usual, put a few burgers on the gas grill. I did bring a whole rebuild kit for this grill because it's getting so bad. And that was one of the things I wanted to get done when I was up here this time, so this is definitely not, uh, I even thought about going fishing, but now the day is half over, but uh, this isn't how I planned my tent trip this time. How many of the crew are still aboard the saucer? I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just get four sheets of this three-quarter inch CDX tongue and groove plywood like I have where the door is. It'll take, uh, you know, to just do the whole front in that plywood and then get more insulation in here. All I have is this four inch foam. That fills it out pretty good. Well, this part is bigger because of the wood box is right there. But anyway, I'll do that on the whole front of this thing and then I'll just paint it white. I don't know what else to do. I can't just try to piece in a piece of uh, canvas or anything, so I think I'll do that. Then there'll be two layers of three-quarter inch this one, and it'll be on the outside too. Take a lot to get through that. That'll have to do for lunch. Take a piece of the canvas so I can bring it in and get some paint color matched so it's the same color it used to be.
Looks harmless enough. <laughs> You can see how bad these grates are getting. I mean, they're just rusting away. And down below too, it just doesn't burn clean at all. And it's just time to rebuild it. It certainly looks like brand new. I think I'll fire it up and see how it burns because it was burning horrible before. Yeah, that flame looks nice and clean on all of them now. I decided to grab Melissa's kayak. I see across right out here from the tent over there, there's a brand new beaver house and I wanted to take a look at that. I don't even remember seeing it last time I was up here. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty new. Green grass, fresh pine up on top there. The mud isn't even dry. There's a beaver swimming right there. Me landing next to it probably moved him out. <laughs> I wonder how much damage they've done to this little island of land here. Looks like they're pretty much just getting small stuff right now. I want to come up here on this point up here. I was up here, I mean, I've been up here a lot of times, but a couple years ago I was here and there was this really big ant hill. Doesn't look like it's an ant hill anymore. Give them about a year to clear some of this out and this should be a nice fishing spot right here. The tent's right there.
years ago, I mean many years ago, Zachary was over on this island and saw this tree right here with this curve in it. It was not nearly this big. And he told my dad he thought that would be a really good one for some kind of furniture. And it's always been growing, but I'm looking up there now and I think it might be dead, but maybe not. Still feels pretty solid. It looks to me like it's probably dying off. We've got that, what is it called, a spruce budworm or something that's killing off all of the balsam fir. And that's why you're seeing so many dead trees. It'll look different in a couple of years once they fall down. All these trees then were a lot smaller and it, you couldn't hardly walk through here. It was so thick and now you can kind of get through a little bit. I wonder how many years ago somebody was camped and left the old coffee can here. Well, let's see if I can make it back without biffing. <laughs> You know when I put my life jacket on that I'm worried that I might tip over. It's really strange to see the dock like that. I several times have been where the water is right up to the bottom of the metal that's underneath the boards. Well, I grabbed that circular saw from my dad's workshop earlier, so I think I'll run over there and drop that off and then go inside and take a look at his cabin, just make sure everything's okay. And then we'll come out here and start a fire. Everything looks good here. Nothing's come in. My dad always leaves a, a cup with ice cubes in it. And so if the power goes out and he gets back here and the ice cubes are melted, he knows he has to throw everything away that's in the freezer. If they're not, everything is fine. Somebody was asking in one of the comments, in fact, I'm going to do a whole question and answer video coming up pretty soon about both up here and the farmhouse. But they asked of the deer if both deer were shot here. And this one right here was shot in British Columbia, Canada. And that one over there was shot here. So, and all the other horns that you see are shot here, the ones that are in the workshop. And I'll just wait till I do that video before I talk about the sheep and the antelope and the moose. And over here we've got the elk and the woodland caribou. I almost forgot. I better water mom's flowers in this uh, planter because it's underneath that roof so it never gets any water. 
Joni. What you doing, huh? No, I didn't mean for you to come in. Just wondering where you were. I'm going to cook everything out on the fire and nothing in here and then uh, I left the cooler in my truck, it's in the back seat, I've got like three bags of ice in there and I'm just going to leave that in my truck. I was talking to Melissa and she goes, I wouldn't leave that in your truck. I says, what are you talking about? I said, I got awesome insurance on my truck, the thing has got over 300,000 miles, the body is getting rusty on it. <laughs> I said, Maybe I'll hang a pork steak out the window and just crack the window a little bit so it can get in there and do some damage. I picked this zucchini out of the garden this morning before I left. Put some seasoning salt on here. And then I'm going to put some nettles on here again like I did last time I was up here. People ask if this has any flavor and it really doesn't have much of anything. I mean, if you put a real lot on there, you'll taste a little bit of green. But uh, it's supposed to be like the superfood. And I mean, I just picked these out in the wild, put them in my dehydrator, dehydrated them, and crushed them up. I think I did it in a blender. It lasts me a long time. Come here, Joni. There you go. You're not getting the food all night, so you better eat that because I gotta put it away later on.
I have to say this is the first time I've ever cooked up here where I'm watching the dog because Joni is a complete protector dog and she's very smart so if anything comes around she'll start barking and also just me looking around you know it's just weird uh, a weird feeling it's funny because she seems so petite you know and I've seen her in a fight with another dog before and it is relentless it you would never believe that this dog has it in her what are you seeing? Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Okay everyone, well it's a quarter after 10, time for me to go to bed. Kind of smells like a hospital around here. Disinfectant and uh, bleach. I think we're going to be okay. Good morning everybody. Pretty eventless night last night and right now it's 43 degrees. It's only 59 degrees in here. Feels a little bit chilly so I turned on the kitchen stove. Leave this on for a few minutes. I was supposed to, or Melissa and I were going to meet again and do lunch by her work and then she finds out that she has to drive up north like uh, she did last time. So I am going to, uh, but she still has to go to the office first and get the, the work vehicle. And anyway, I'm going to meet her at, Joni and I are going to meet her at her work because there's a bunch of boxes there that need to be broken down. And uh, I told her I would do that. I have nothing else. I mean, there's stuff to do with the farmhouse, but uh, it'll be nice to see her. <laughs> but to meet her at her office, I gotta be out of here in about 15 minutes. Joni ate none of her food last night, but she did have uh, some of my pork steak. So <laughs> I'm sure that was better.
Well, that should at least keep it from leaning against my screen door and bending it every time. If it wants to get in, it can get in, but that'll uh, keep the innocent part of it from doing any damage. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Once again, what I had planned to do with the tent ended up being something different, but uh, it was nice to get up here. I should be up here again in two weeks. on the next video.